before the speech that Keir Starmer gave yesterday, Labour posted their biggest lead in an opinion poll since YouGov started doing opinion polls. And and then the air coming from Liverpool of competence. One of the crazies in the Daily Telegraph, one of the comment writers who routinely challenges um, Ricky Gervais and Stuart Lee in the comedy stakes is, is writing today about how the Labour Party are currently, for the first time in a long time, looking like the least mad option. Uh, there is a sea change in the air. I have expected it for some time. I've, I've got to be honest with you. Because I got to spend an hour with Keir Starmer on, on, on stage uh, earlier this year and I saw something I hadn't seen in his public profiles. I saw something I hadn't... Um, witnessed in his PMQ's performances or in his in his speeches and I still haven't seen much of what I saw on that stage that night if you weren't there then you can listen to the interview in its entirety on the full disclosure uh, series but there was a humanity and an integrity to him that I had almost forgotten politicians could possess just just two things to draw your attention to the first is goals Goals. This is something else that Mick Lynch has got as well. The, this clarity of purpose. Mick Lynch has some fairly dodgy opinions on things like Ukraine and Brexit, clearly. But he doesn't talk about them when he's in studios. He's not interested in sharing his views on Ukraine and Brexit. If he's pushed to do so, I'm sure he will. But he clearly focuses, and I've spent quite a lot of time with him as well in the last couple of months. He's been in this studio for an hour, and he's done the Full Disclosure podcast interview series as well. If you're not on that yet, by the way, Full Disclosure, you're really missing out on It's free. I can't believe it's free. It's bad enough that this is free. It's bad enough you don't have to pay for this, but you get Full Disclosure for free as well. Thankfully, I get paid, so everyone can relax. So Mick Lynch, very much about getting a result for his members. Not, not about a bigger you know, political movement. There, There is a big, bigger political movement underway. The Enough is Enough campaign has bigger targets than simple pay deals for railway workers. But he is so laser-like in his focus on what he wants to do. And what I discovered when I was talking about, um, talking to Keir Starmer, is his whole career is driven by a desire to do more. So you become a barrister and you're helping a client at a time, Right? one client at a time. And that begins to be unsatisfying. You, you find yourself thinking, do you know, I'd, I'd like to do more. I'd like to be helping more. I'd like to be, you know, helping all victims, for example, of a certain type of crime. He's very good on um, uh, women who've been killed by partners where there was a record that the partner should have been aware of, the woman should have been aware of the, the, her new partner's record. So he's he's moved from client, from individual client or, or family to entire constituency of victim. He wanted to be director of public prosecutions so that he could move against the grooming gangs in the north of England, for example, which Nazir Afzal, the chief prosecutor in the northwest, will tell you Starmer was absolutely instrumental in kicking back up the to-do list and reprioritizing when he was DPP. The uh, partners with records of abuse that new uh, partners can't find out about, he's changed that. So when he was DPP, he wanted to, to move from just looking after one client at a time to improving things for entire constituencies of victim at a time. And then he became dissatisfied with being DPP with being director of public prosecutions because as a director of public prosecutions he can only really work within the laws that have been legislated by the legislature i.e. the House of Commons the Houses of Parliament so he decided to get into the legislature having of course been knighted for services to criminal prosecution in this country so he became an MP and then fairly quickly I imagine um, he got a little bit frustrated with that. He pragmatically, in my view, possibly hypocritically in your view, stayed loyal to the last leader, was not one of those MPs who either uh, walked away entirely, like Andy Burnham, to go and be mayor of Greater Manchester. Andy Burnham is the guest on this week's Full Disclosure. You'll be able to listen to that one from Friday. We've also had Angela Rayner on it, of course. So this new generation, or not new generation, but this new vanguard of Labour politicians, all all, all given long and interesting interviews uh, to, to that full disclosure series recently. Well worth getting hold of it. 
So he didn't walk away, he stayed loyal. He was Brexit secretary in, a, in an administration in a, in a Labour party that was making a pig's ear of Brexit on a scale that was almost unbelievable, almost impossible to watch. So that might be a problem there. But now he is almost front and centre. So everybody who's been waiting for him to I know, show a bit of ankle, as they would have said in Victorian times, uh, has now got an opportunity to decide whether or not he has. So... Is Keir Starmer nudging your needle? 0345 And you know how this programme works. There's always a why. There's always a why of it. Why is he, what is it that he's done? What is it that's going on that is nudging your needle with regard to Keir Starmer? And of course, many people will want to answer no to that question. You want to see more. You want to, uh, I don't know what you want. You're going to have to ring me and tell me on 0345 973 So Keir Starmer is not pulling it for you. There are two key constituencies here, aren't there? there? There are people who voted Conservative in 2019, often for the very first time. Is he tempting you back into the fold? I think he has reprioritized you over what you would call the sort of Corbyn loyalists, the people who are tweeting about Keith. They called him Keith. They thought that was funny. Obviously, on this program, we don't think there's anything funny about the name Keith. It's a fantastic name that at least one 36-year-old in this country um, is still called, because we, we spoke to him again yesterday, the youngest Keith in the country, as far as we're aware. We've got the second youngest working on the program, as you know, uh, which is why we don't like jokes about people called Keith. I don't think he cares as much about you. I think he, rightly or wrongly, sees you as, as cultish or um, whatever it may be and beyond reach. I disagree. I don't think you are. Many of you are not beyond reach. Perfectly capable of voting for Ed Miliband, so you'd be perfectly capable of voting for Keir Starmer, who is currently looking like a better proposition than, um, than Ed Miliband. So what do we reckon? At this stage in his leadership, how much of the bounce in the polls, how much of the air of exuberance running around the conference hall in Liverpool is down to what Keir Starmer is doing, 03456060973, and how much of it is down to how awful the other lot are currently performing? Because that is a crucial question, and this is the anoraki bit. So what you're looking at is whether or not this bounce is going to be sustained. You're looking at whether or not this is a balloon or whether it's a boulder. If it's a balloon, it can pop, it can deflate, it can get soggy, it can get flaccid. If it's a boulder, it can't. If it's a boulder, it can explode, but it's a hell of a lot harder to blow up a boulder than it is to pop a balloon. So if it is largely built on dissatisfaction, if your needle is being nudged solely because or chiefly because... Kwasi Kwarteng appears to have dropped the mother of all clangers while Liz Truss has gone AWOL and have only been in, essentially, if you remove the funeral from the last calendar month, they've only been in power for a week. Good God, where will we be in a month? The IMF are already ringing the breaking glass to sound the alarm and, and they've only been in there for a week, effectively. But how much of it is down to them being rubbish and how much of it is down to... Starmer beginning to look like the real deal. Because I'm going to level with you. I, I, I've been politically homeless now for the best part of six years, or I was politically homeless for the, for the best part of three years until 2019. Anything I, I, I would have been an improvement on where Labour were in 2019. You'd have to go back to the 1930s for an electron performance as poor as what they handed in against Boris Johnson. But I have had that reservation, if that's the right word, about... Oh, Starmer, um, he's not exactly setting the world on fire, is he? And then I met him, had the pleasure of spending a proper amount of time with him, saw him under a modicum of pressure, under questioning, and, and felt my needle nudged. No guarantee that my needle was going to be nudged that night, but nudged it was. And, that, and, and I know that it wouldn't have nudged other people's needles unless they were there or unless they listened to it. And now we've reached a point where I, 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 think, I think we've seen enough to start to wonder whether... He's got, he is the real deal.